Welcome back to Patrick Christie's Night. We are only on GB News. Now, how would you feel about a cap, a legally binding cap, of 100,000 people a year when it comes to net migration? It's time for that to add. So, the final four Tory leadership candidates all took to the stage today in their big push to convince everyone that they should be the next party's leader before they're whittled down to two next week. Now, Tom Tugendhat, he used the opportunity to outline his plan to reduce net migration. We need an effective deterrent. But we must solve as well as stop. And that's why I'll set a legal cap on net migration at 100,000. Not a target, not an ambition, a cap. Right. So, that puts clear blue water between him and his leadership rival, Robert Jemrick, who told GB News' political editor, Christopher Hope, that he wants a cap much lower than 100,000. Bring back this, uh, this net, net 100,000 a year migrant arrivals? Um, yes, but, but go significantly further. What I'm saying is Parliament should set that number. I think it should be in the tens of thousands or lower. Right, OK, so tonight I am asking, should we introduce a legal migration cap of 100,000, or is that still too high? Going head-to-head -head on this now are the Reform UK MP, Rupert Lowe, and the political adviser, Pablo Ohana Chaps. Thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Now, um, Rupert, is 100,000 net too high? Well, Patrick, every target that we've been uh, told is going to be uh, met by... Uh, all the various parties since Tony Blair opened the floodgates in 97, uh, they've never adhered to them. The point is not the target. There should be now very limited uh, targeted immigration. They don't mention the word targeted. We want people who are going to contribute to our economy. We've got far too many low-skill uh, people from parts of the world, all over the world. We don't know what their objectives are. They're costing the British taxpayer money and they're not contributing to our economy sufficiently to, to cover their own costs. And at the end of the day, we've got 9 million people of working age who aren't working. So you can't look at one issue without the other. But my view is it's got to be targeted in immigration. Uh, it's got to be high-skilled immigration. Mm. We need to learn from Singapore, who basically paid their judiciary properly, paid their politicians properly, and actually targeted uh, their, their immigration policy. They now enjoy GDP per capita twice as high as the UK. Australia is the other example that nobody uh, takes enough notice of. They have managed the situation very well. Uh, I have very little faith in the current political leadership being able to manage immigration okay. and civil All services. Right. I'll, 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 cut you, I'll, I'll cut you off there and I'll come back to you. Pablo, I, I'm just going to pick up on, on what Rupert said there. So, uh, a record number of 1.6 million legal migrants in Britain are currently not working and they're costing the taxpayer £8 billion a year. Uh, there is a case, isn't there, to have a fixed level of net migration so that we can all, you know, feel more, feel more of the economic positive impact ourselves instead of opening the floodgates. Well, I mean, we've been here before and on arbitrary targets. David Cameron's, you know, famously set that target of 100,000. Theresa May tried, Boris Johnson tried, Liz, well, Liz Truss, less said about her the better, but Rishi Sunak tried. You know, it's never worked because it doesn't reflect the reality of the situation. Immigration is vital to our country. They contribute more in taxes than they take in benefits. No one ever talks about that. Last year, that was more than 122 billion pounds. Why are we all poor they then? Fill they, well, that's not true. That's well, not true. GDP per capita is down. World. We've got we've got we've in, got population increasing faster than we've ever had before, and GDP per capita is going down. So why is that? That is not down to immigration. The problem is right. that we, we have this conversation all the time about what immigration does to our country, and we never talk about the benefits there. Because the truth is that on the right, it is easier to not solve this issue. We don't have a reasonable, rational debate about this, because then they wouldn't have anything to campaign on. It's easier to dehumanise the issue and demonise other people rather than having a sensible conversation about how immigration well, There's as much dehumanisation about a spreadsheet, is there, Pablo? You know, I mean, that's, that's what it looks like on a spreadsheet. Setting arbitrary targets like 100,000 when these people contribute more in taxes than they take in benefits doesn't make sense. We need our NHS, oh. which we all love. It would oh, collapse without immigration. We need yeah. that. They bring 
innovation, they bring cultural diversity, they bring a skilled workforce that strengthens our global competitiveness. Oh, that's what I thought, you know, when I, when, like, yeah, when, I, when, I go, when I go into the NHS because I've got crippling abdominal pain, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really there fundamentally for the cultural enrichment. But, uh, Rupert, I, I'll throw it over to you. Look, is, is there some truth to what, to what uh, Pablo said there? And if we are going to have this right, I think it's important to have a bit of context about where your head is at, Rupert, when it comes to migration, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I actually think you want net zero migration, don't you? Uh, I, I want mi minuscule targeted immigration, only immigration that's going to benefit the existing UK economy. So where we have a skill shortage, target that. But, I mean, Pablo is just on a different planet. You know, he's not actually in, 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 a, in a proper, uh, what I call, real industry. You know, the guy is out of touch with reality. And the fact of the matter is, you know, you look at our, you look at our economy, as you say, Patrick, nothing works. No, nothing works because immigration has flooded the entire country. Every single service that we've got is now broken. Uh, every The civil service is not functioning properly. None of their offices are working because there are too many people who come into the country legal and, legally and illegally. And as you quite rightly say, our GDP per capita is falling all the time. So the new arrivals are actually costing the country oh. money. Oh, all right. Um, Pablo, just, I'm going to ask you the same question, but in reverse, really. So as far as your mindset is at when it comes to migration, is it that you don't really want to put a cap on it because actually you, you just like loads more? No, I don't think we, we need an open door on immigration. I think that it does need to be targeted and we need to make sure that the people coming in are contributing. I think the problem is, is that we, you know, as I say, this debate happens a lot, but it becomes very unpleasant, it becomes very personal, and it is matched only really by an extraordinary absence of accurate information. We have to clarify, firstly, what are we talking about? Immigration, migration, refugees, all these different types of terminology that just get kind of conflated together. Refugees, for example, are people who flee desperate war and persecution. 85% of refugees migrants settling uh, countries you know directly next to where they are fleeing. Do we need effective me measures to control immigration? Oh. Yes. The answer is competent, effective government, which we haven't had for decades. We have suffered a decade of weak, immature, populist governing with people who just slap targets on things because they want to attract headlines and votes. If we assess people when they come into the country and we, we look at their situation, where they are coming from, we can create a fair system that is competent and compassionate, that doesn't waste resources on... What about being compassionate to your own people? Then, like you know, that, that, that's part of it. You know, is it compassionate to create a situation where migration is surging far quicker than economic growth? I'm not entirely sure that's compassionate to the people who pay into the system day in, day out and have lived here all their lives or their grandparents have lived here all their lives. I mean, I, I don't, it's, it's compassionate to who, isn't it, I suppose? It's, it's, where, it's where your priorities are, really. I, I, I am currently getting shouted out there, I'm afraid, chap, so I'm going to have to leave this. I do apologise. But thank you very much. It's a fantastic head-to-head. -head. We'd love to see it. And I would also like to emphasise that Pablo does have a proper job, Rupert. Let's not be mean. OK, <laughs> so there uh, we are. Reform well, UK, I'm not sure Reform about UK that, MP <laughs> Rupert Lowe and political advisor Pablo Adler. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Um,